Hello, my friends. Welcome back uh, to the channel. I uh, am very, very overdue in doing this uh, tournament report from the Burton Banter and War, which took place at the end, or uh, towards the end, middle, end, middle. Anyway, it was in March. Uh, it's now April. Uh, and that's because I went to the tournament and then immediately went on a holiday. <laughs> so, so sorry about that. Uh, but you know, the benefit of it is that we'll be discovering together what happened, because I can tell you right now, I don't remember. I'm not even sure where I placed. So this is going to be a journey of discovery for us both. Uh, this was the first of the uh, tournaments run by uh, my good friend Scott, um, who's who running out of a uh, gaming club. Uh, it's kind of a gaming social kind of bar, pub. It's kind of cool. Um, although the bar wasn't open <laughs> until later. Um, they had food and stuff. It was very cool in, in Burton on Trent, which is in the uh, the Midlands of the lovely United Kingdom, which is where we are. So it was a 1995 tournament points tournament. It had four games. Yes, most tournaments these days, one days, have three games. And this one had four, which I have to tell you, I really enjoyed. Uh, I was thinking, oh, I'm going to be too tired, going to be exhausting. I loved it. I really enjoyed the four game format. It was long, I tell you that. It was long, uh, but uh, very, very good. Very good fun to do four games. So, cracking to my list. So I took my Kingdoms of Meh, Meh, Kingdoms of Men, um, which you would have seen in a recent battle report. I'm sure you've all watched that battle report end to end. Am I right? Uh, and it's exactly the same list. I have changed it a bit after this tournament. Uh, I might talk about that at the end if I remember, uh, but it's pretty much the same. So we have, um, a core of two regiments uh, and a horde of foot guard, all with indomitable will, uh, and they are supported by the monarch. So you see here, the monarch has this rallying two for knight only, right? Um, and uh, the foot guard are knights, the only knights I've got actually. So it makes them very good because it comes to 16, 18, this comes to 23, 25, right? So they become very, very, very punchy. Um, no crushing strength on them though, so that's a 1995 issue. Anyway, and then I have a horde of militia mob, it's kind of a big horde of chaffy chaff, uh, and then th my punch is kind of three regiments of fanatics who are really, really souped up. So one's got sharpness, one's got hate for vicious, and one's got blessing of the gods for elite. So these guys charge 13 inches, they've got a uh, fearless nerve, um, <laughs> melee two here, only 15 attacks, which only, oh yeah, I say only, it's a lot for a regiment, but uh, less than other Berserkers and Crush 1. So, they're pretty good. Two Ballistas, which are fantastically good. Love them. Um, there's my Bane Chanter. He's also got this Aura of Life Leech, which I forget for most of the game, so that's good. Um, and I've got um, a bunch of flying guys. So I've got our Fanatic Instigator. Instigators are great. They're very cheap. Very, very cheap. Um, for a dash 14, six attacks on threes, Crush 1. Right? Plus, gave this guy the wings. Okay, so he drops down to defense three, which is the same as the other fanatics now. Anyway, um, you can upgrade them, by the way, on foot to give them rally one for fanatics. But I thought, nah, this guy is too good for that. So he's a uh, defense three, but he can charge up to 23 inches because he's wild charge D3, which is pretty fine. He's also mighty, which is incredibly useful. So there's that. There's the hero on Peg, who's another hero on Peg, Pegasus, who's obviously just a very, very weak. Um, hero, hero. He doesn't have a... She, in fact, my army doesn't have a name. She's just a hero, hero. Um, three attacks, so she's just kind of to get in the way. Incredibly cheap. And then a kind of mini dragon is general on wind beast. So he's got seven attacks, 14, 16. Very low nerve, really. Dipo disappointingly no nerve uh, for 190 points. But yeah, he's pretty good. He's uh, crushed two, thunder one. It's nice. Nimble, very inspiring. Everything's very inspiring. Anyway, and then the monarch, who's a... a, a this monarch's just on foot with Crush 3, very inspiring. He's basically there just to rally my knights. <laughs> 255 points for Rally 2. Yeah, no. Why not? Anyway, that's my list. So, my first game was against the lovely Heath. Heath, I know very well. Very, 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 very nice man. Uh, incredibly good painter. Really good hobby, as you will see. And he's bought his dwarves, which is terrifying because dwarves are now terrifying. So, his list is uh, pretty much what you face these days. Doesn't have the sharpshooters you sometimes see. But everything else is there. So he's got um, he's got two regiments of Iron Guard. These are the Defense Six guys. All right, two regiments of those, all with throwing mastiffs. Uh, he's got a horde of Shield Breakers who completely unnecessarily are crushing strength two now, which I disagree with. Um, <clears throat> 
They're really scary. Uh, two regiments of has Mastiff hunting pack, also with Mastiffs. Mastiffs carrying Mastiffs, so lots of Mastiffs. That's one, let's count them. One, two, three, four. Um, and there's one some more coming as well. Uh, he's got Gollux Fury, who's just gross um, with this Iron Resolve Aura. Uh, Berserker Lord on Brock with the requisite. Do you remember, do you remember when the Brock, Berserker Lord on Brock used to come with the um, Beast Slayer, the Blade of the Beast Slayer, as default? These days, I only see them with the Gnome Glass Shield. Because uh, it makes them defense six for a round, which is better, I think. Anyway. Uh, my uh, least favourite character, Faber Ironheart. <laughs> that was a Freudian slip. Ironheart. I do hate him, though. I hate him. He's unnecessarily good. Only speed 5, though, Rob Hudson, who played him as speed 6. And defense 6, just awful. Shooting, 7 attacks. Oh, he's so good. Anyway, and then he's got the Royal Guard formation, which is uh, two regiments of Bullwalkers. And these are the melee three guys, the so death five melee three. And they come with phalanx, which is kind of good against flying guys. Uh, he's given them both throwing mastiffs, so we're now up to six sets of throwing mastiffs. And then a horde of ironclad, the kind of basic dwarf. Uh, but because they are in the Royal Guard, they also hit on threes. So that's good. Uh, and they're standard bearer with the loot. So, with an aura of elite for infantry, great list. Really enjoying that. Didn't enjoy playing it, but great list. So we were playing uh, Invade, and this was our um, battlefield. Apologies for the slightly wonky angle, uh, and this is because it was the first time the, the, the boards that have been set out in this pub, and for this first game, they kind of tried to make us as comfortable as possible by giving us sofas on both sides, but they were about two millimeters from the edge of the board, so you couldn't actually get. I, if I was to stand, I would actually be standing on the sofa to, to get to it. So um, we changed it. Uh, we all moved it around after the first game, and it was much more comfortable, but. Um, yeah, it was a little bit uh, <laughs> kind of le leaning haphazardly over the board. But anyway, very nice board. So this is, oh, right, so what we're talking about heights. So I can't remember exactly what heights were. Uh, it doesn't come up, but that's, let's say it's a height nine forest. Why not? Or a height, and a height, that's right, there's a height nine forest. I remember now, and height six buildings. So we have a nine forest, six buildings, three hills. There's a three hill over here too. Nine there and six there. And a ton of walls on this board. There's no difficult terrain on this board. But we have wall, 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 and wall, and wall. So we are height two walls a go go. So yeah. Uh, invade, obviously, uh, is where you have to get over the center line. Most over the center, most units strength over the center line wins. Very simple. And this is how we deployed. So um I started off, I think, I can't remember who chose sides, I think it was me. I chose sides because I wanted this hill to charge off because I've got enough crushing strength and he's rotten with defense six. And I have a lot that can do a lot to defense six, frankly, so a little bit scary. Um, so I, I started off deploying in the middle here and then I put this, in, this is my fanatic instigator over here. All of my kings of men, by the way, are um, mantic models so you'll see they're mostly Basile and some northern alliance chucked in we'll have a look at them in a minute but um, my fanatic instigator is a, a julius which i printed off of the mantic vault and then scaled down to be an infantry so he's fallen over briefly over here but i put him down here to try and get him to put as much as possible over here because i wanted to put my stuff on this side here so what i wanted to do was to use these uh, uh militia mob as just the you know pointless unit strength because he's going to ignore them because they're pointless but they're actually three unit strength and that can win the game to get them over so um he obligingly this is favor ironheart down here we'll have a look a little bit closer actually when we go down there into shots but basically i wanted to get him to put stuff here by putting stuff here so that i could put my war machines on this hill which was handily in the deployment zone so i've got two ballistas here which are going to spend the entire time shooting these guys so I've checked with Heath what's what because I find I have the same problem fighting dwarves that I have fighting Green Lady, which I never know what any unit is. But you can see here, so these guys are ironclad. Oh no, they're not. Oh god, here we bloody go. He did tell me. So I know the guys at the barrels are the um, the defense six guys, whatever they're called, Iron Guard. Yeah, there's the Iron Guard, and there's the other Iron Guard. This is the Ironclad Horde. 
right? Which means that this horde here, oh, oops, mine. This horde you can just see here. It has got some crossbows at the back. Ignore that, because <laughs> that's his shield breaker. Shield breaker? Siege breaker? Shield breaker horde. All right, crush two horde there. Um, which means these guys must be bulwarkers. Yeah. Okay, good. Uh, that's obviously Golok's Fury there in the middle. There's one of the Mastiff backs. And uh, there's the other one. This is Faber, this is the Brock Lord. And there's a standard bearer here. Okay. And then on my side, so this is my militia mob, currently being played by uh, Sisterhood. This is one of my... This one isn't Mantic. The two heroes, these guys aren't Mantic, they're printed. Um, but they kind of fit in. This is my general on Winged Beast. This is my hero on Pegasus. There's my two Ballistae. That's the plural of Ballista. <laughs> I made that up. I don't know if it is. Um, <clears throat> my fanatics at the back. I made these little signs to go on them. They're magnetised to the back so I can uh, remember what's what. But the fanatics are these Northern Alliance guys. So we've got Vicious, Sharpness and Elite. This is my dragon. So the whole army is themed around this, this Chinese dragon that I painted about four years ago. <laughs> Um, you can see that on the front of these Basilean men-at-arms, which form my men-at-arms, um, or foot guard rather, I've painstakingly painted a dragon head on every flipping shield. And yes, I did, because I'm insane. I'm actually rather proud of it. As well as the little banners, look at that! Looks good, doesn't it? Anyway, I'm stop boasting about your painting. Um, and there's my instigator. He's still fallen over, but he's all the way down there. So you can see what the plan here is, too. Um, push forward here, going to use these guys as kind of to break the wave of stuff because he's going to be shooting away and he's going to be throwing Mastiffs at me, right? I'm going to try and split his Mastiffs up. I'm going to try and distract with this guy. I'm going to try and distract both Faber and the Brock Lord because they are quite scary. So he's going to come and break on my wall of kind of uh, um, <clears throat> foot guard to allow my then my punchy guys to come in. This is the sharpness one, which is the really scary one, which is why he's kind of behind, they're kind of behind this forest, because even when they charge, they'll be on threes. I'm going to soften them up with my my, my guys here, um, and my much more mobile guys will try and come around the side to do some damage there. All right, so that's the plan. Off we go. So I win first turn, hurrah, um, which was very pleasant. And then, so uh, in that plan, so we just push forward as hard as we can. And what I'm trying to do here is stay out of Mastiff range for the time being, All right? because they have speed four plus Mastiffs so of 12, so 17, no, 16. Wow, math's still great, still great at maths. Um, so I managed to get these guys over the wall, which is nice. So we've got some quite pleasant kind of charging to go on here. My instigator is just here looking this way. Uh, yeah, and then uh, these guys can't, they can be seen, they can't see through the woods, but I have got the other foot guard here, so it's all fine. Uh, and that is uh, bolt throw. So bolt throws have a go. We do a single wound, which is going to be iron resolved off. So that's going to go. Right. So on uh, Heath's turn one, he decided he didn't care about my instigator, which frankly is rude. Uh, but fair. Defense six. He's a crush one. What's he going to do? Really, what I want to do with him is get him into the standard bearer because that guy is a knob, or into the chaff, or something like that. Anyway, we'll see. The Brock Lord will eat him up though, so that's kind of scary. Yeah, and he comes around here, so he provides a nice kind of um, cover. I'm pleased that he only turned one of these regiments of uh, pool workers this way, um, which means I can I can kind of come into them. He's also, he's to put this chaff this way, this, these uh, mastiffs, which basically means I can charge here with impunity because nothing can see me. So let's see if I do that. Um, that's Gollop's gun onto my uh, foot guard for four wounds, which I don't like. Onto turn two. So yeah, I decided not to come into the Bulwarkers because they I won't kill them. But what I did do is put my hero on peg into this guy here because that means um, if I do, you know, he's gonna he's gonna want to come in here, which means I can I can start doing unpleasant things. So it gives me time. Basically, it's just uh, holding it up because this one is 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 gonna charge me or shoot me, and I've, one less mastiff to throw at me is pleasant. So. These guys are already wounded, so they're already pretty looking bad, so I push them forward as bait on their four wounds, essentially to say, come on then, all of you, have a go. Have a go if you want. I do the same with the Horde, because they're going to... I mean, Golak isn't going to be, but anything else is going to be hindered into the woods. 23-25 nerve is not going to do anything, and I've got some nasty things to come in afterwards. So yeah, just a little bit cautious. So these guys are up on the hill. They've got a nice long charge. He can shoot them. He might go in with the Brock Lord, but then I've made sure I keep my line of sight here. 
so I can double charge if needs be. That's something I've been really trying to do, which is to position so that I always have backup. Um, <clears throat> let's see if it works. And you see the instigator I've pushed all the way around here. He is in charge range of the Brock Lord. I couldn't do anything about that, but essentially, if the Brock Lord's chasing off after my cheap instigator, very happy. That's brilliant. Please crack on. You're unlikely to kill him in one. You know, two you will kill him, but by that time, I'll be hopefully doing some nasty things. Uh, this is the big problem. For Invade, that's eight unit strength right there in two hordes. Now, they are on walls, and they're going to be very, very slow. They can't order march or anything like that. Um, this stuff is, I mean, it's, it's just got a lot of unit strength and very durable stuff. So, anyway, three more wounds from the bolt throwers onto this particular iron guard. Um, but then I double wound it. So, you know, hey, get it out of the way early, right? Uh, and then, against all the odds, my hero on Pegasus knocked it out of the park and killed the Mastiff back in one with her three attacks. So she was delighted. And she stayed like that because that means that they, uh, if they charge me, it's still the front. Yep, it's front. Um, it doesn't look like a front, does it? If you actually draw, I'm like trying to draw a straight line here. Wow, wow, wow. That looks like a flank, doesn't it? Maybe I moved it afterwards, whatever. Heath's turn two. Let's see. Maybe I left it to flank. What do you think? Uh, oh, no, look, I didn't. I did turn it. Here he is. I'm trying to work out which way around it was. No, I turned it. So I turned her so she's facing. Um, so he does come in here. Um, I might be able to charge him with various things. We'll see. What it looks like. So um, kind of nicely squared off. A kind of toilet bowling a bit. Um, he's got a lovely curve going on here. My curve is less convincing, but he's scarier than I am. So there you go. So yeah, Brock Lord, so these guys do all push forwards. Um, Faber's going to shoot up my fanatics. He's put um, his Mastiffs right in front of his hall. This is kind of classic chaffing. Some lovely chaffing. So basically, he's allowed one regiment space here. But if it's really nice positioning because if that regiment does come in here, A, it's not going to kill an iron guard, uh, ironclad horde, and B, it's going to get flanked by this horrible horde here. And likewise, only one space here, and it's going to get flanked by Faber here. So really nice positioning. Uh, and then he's taken the Brock Lord into my instigator, which is good for me. All right, and then over here, so he he pushed forward and he decided that he was going to just um, send Golok in. I don't agree with this. I think he should have multi-charged. If you're going to go for it, you go for it. All right, Golok may kill them in one, but if he doesn't kill them in one, he's in a whole world of pain. So I think possibly a mistake, but we'll see. Yeah, that's Faber for you. <laughs> it's awful. So six wounds on this fanatic regiment. That, that already puts them into the danger zone. Not happy about that, but can't do anything about it. Uh, and then horrific rolling. So he sends his uh, bulwarkers. Rather than shoot me, he goes into me, um, as he pretty much has to. And then only one wound, which is just terrible rolling. Really, really bad on threes and... F are they crushing one, anything? Threes and fives. Anyway, one wound. Bad. That's very lucky for me there. And even worse... <clears throat> So 10, he puts them up to 10 wounds. So six wounds off Gollum, which is less than he should. So a really bad round of dice. And then he wavers them, which is terrible because I've got Indomitable Will and I've got a Horde and a Flank. So let's see what we can do there. Seven wounds onto the Fanatic Instigator. And as you can see, he's okay, um, which is kind of what I predicted. But you need to roll really well. He's not inspiring though. So it's a seven and he's a dash 14. We just need to roll a seven once and didn't. So that's unlucky, really. Oh, bad turn for Heath. Great turn for me. Turn three for the Kingdoms of Meh. So we go. <clears throat> I look at this regiment here and I think, well, I could kill you. These guys couldn't get in, so instead I just move them up. So we're just going to kind of grind off each other. It's going to take a few turns to kill them, and we're already turn three. Because everything I decide needs to go for Golok. Golok is such a key, integral part of this army. It just needs to go down. And um, so I send in... Um, uh, so the General Wing Beast goes in the flank. That's critical, because he's got crush three. We go back in the front with these guys using Indomitable Will. And then I take a hindered flank into the side. All right, and I do this for, for various reasons, but basically just to protect myself then um, we take uh, two regiments so we take the fanatic regiment with sharpness um, and this foot guard horde into the um, shield breaker horde let's just see how that looked before I didn't pick that one up 
I probably didn't take a good enough picture. Yeah, I was, talking, I was wanging on about this and this, so good positioning there. But he's left his shield breaker horde open for two. I guess you can't, he didn't have enough chaff to chaff everything. So I took advantage of that. So both go in. I don't think I'll kill them. Um, but I've kind of sacked this all very, very wounded. So six wounds, um, vicious fanatics regiment. I send into these dogs. I should kill them. And then I'm going to overrun as far as possible. Because if I end up here, essentially this horde can't then flank into my foot guard here. So this is basically a sacrifice to allow me to grind through these guys. Um, also a slight positioning error. He's pushed forward so hard with these iron guard that by my guys in here can't be seen by them so i'm pretty scot-free there so that's good i've kept my dragon back he's just kind of loitering to rally because there's just too much scary stuff um i've got my standard bearer here for some inspiring these guys are out inspiring this may be nine may not i don't know uh, the fanatic instigator decided he doesn't want to fight a block brock lord so he's flown as far as he possibly can 20 over here so he's out of charge range Nice uh, hiding, by the way, of this standard bearer here behind the woods so I couldn't get to him. Uh, yeah. Let's see how we go. So Bane Chant goes on to the horde in the flank of Golok. Probably the better choice. It's more attacks. It is on fours. These guys will be on threes, but, uh, you know, more attacks in it. Um, that's bolt throwers. The only thing the bolt throwers could see was this eye, uh, was this... Um, what are they? Iron Guard. And so a few wounds on there, which is good. They've been iron resolving off. Oh, actually no wounds on them. They're already on four wounds. Ah. Okay. But we do kill Golok, so that's very, very exciting. Very happy about that. And then the general turns like this, so he's kind of acting as chaff against these guys. Uh, the horde just basically can turn this as far as I could turn. So these guys are going to have to take a hindered charge into me because there's nothing else to charge. And this uh, very wounded foot guard regiment, which I forgot to uh, iron resolve anyway, I forgot to uh, life leech, um, is uh, feeling good. And you can see over there, magnificent. Here he does one wound. Let's go. She's a legend. Uh, ten wounds here, which is probably, I mean, maybe slightly under, but I've not got a lot of crushing going on here, so probably about right. Um, but unfortunately, no wave or anything like that, but they've got headstrong anyway, so good pointless. I do kill the Mastiffs. I overrun just enough. So he's going to have to kind of take me on here. It's actually a flank, if you think about it. On to Heath's turn three. So this is how we look. So I'm in a reasonably good position. I'm quite happy with how it's going. Still got a regiment of fanatics. Still got a regiment here. So this is quite a solid block of unit strength now, which I'm trying to get over the line. Unfortunately, it's not as solid as this block, but this is 10 wounds. So... Uh, plus, Faber is kind of hanging around back here. He's such a good positional piece. He could have pushed forward a lot harder with him. He's very durable. He's kind of hanging out, and his Brockler is over there. So my Distractathon kind of worked in that these kind of really key uh, force multipliers are out the back. Anyway, so he doesn't take the hindered charge for um, pretty good reasons, which is there's a dragon <laughs> waiting in the flank. He's not going to kill this horde on his own, and then he's going to get, uh, you know, 20 attacks in the flank he does take this attack he just kind of buys his time he figures i'm on four wounds i'm probably okay because this is going to be hindered uh the horde counter charges into this fanatic regiment because of a low defense which allows him to take this um bulwarker into the other regiment and then he just kind of you can see he's squished in on the flats over there yep and there's a counter charge there so off we crack and the Faber comes up on a hill to start shooting things. <clears throat> so he does kill my hero. So she did well. She did well. She lasted well. She acted as a nice blocker. And now we've, we've got two units, both of which are three unit strength facing off against each other. I don't fancy my chances. No offense. Um, only four wounds onto my general. So he's still feeling pretty peachy. Um... Uh, he does, however, murder the fanatics with that shieldbreaker horde. Not that surprising. Uh, just a bit sad. <laughs> oh, it's the Brock Lord he took in. In fact, he didn't. There was no regiment of bulwarkers. I was wrong. I'm sorry. That's where the regiment of that shield. I oh, God, bloody too many things. It was the uh, Brock Lord came in here, but it looks like he didn't do any wounds. 
That's sad. Oh, there you go. One wound. One wound from the Brock Lord. That is poor, isn't it? I guess hindered. Hmm, that's probably why. However, the fanatics over here exploded to tiny fanatical pieces, which is kind of what you'd expect. On to turn four. With 20 minutes left on the clock. So this is how we're looking. So it's really on a knife edge. This is a lot of unit strength that I haven't touched. Uh, that will probably die from the charge to now. Um, these guys are probably in, in, in danger, I want to say. Yeah, but I've not got a lot else I can do. These guys just kind of need to get through, don't they? So here we go. Oh, I've taken two pictures at the same time. This is my pre and post. That's what I did. Um, so this is just this horde coming into these guys because I thought might as well. And we've got the dragon poking out. Let's have a little look. Oh, that's a critical thing I did. So this um, regiment was kind of stuck behind all this meat here. And I realized that I'm on a losing battle here. So I've just turned them and moved them this way because I can last probably one to two turns against this regiment, uh, by which time having a, a lovely regiment of fanatics coming in your flank is not what you want. Oh, look, I remember to uh, life leech. <clears throat> so, yeah, we counter charge the Brock Lord and we shoot the horde with the bolt throwers. I put them up to 15 wounds and I don't kill them, which is very disappointing, isn't it? That is disappointing. Uh, eight wounds here, which is great, but not enough. Uh, and everything else. So now these guys are going to get flanked. One wound on that Brock Lord. That's about... It's tit for tat, isn't it? They really had a slap fight there. On to Heath's turn four. So, yep, he's kept these guys here because they're just going to go across the line. Faber's really kind of coming down now. That's what he should have done, really, to start with. He's really starting to work him around the flank because he's terrifying. Uh, and this is incredibly painful <laughs> for card account to get squished. Uh, counter charge here, counter charge here, right? And then he's just kind of pushed forward with these guys, which is what you really should be doing. Uh, twice, apparently. Oh, that's Mastiffs. You finally chucked some Mastiffs at me for a single wound. Wah, wah, wah. That's not great, is it? So this is now my turn five. I didn't take a photo of the dice, did I? Look at that. That's turn five, I'm telling you now. Right, so for turn five, um, I bane chart these guys and go back in on these eight wounded. So they should die. Um, and then I send my fanatic instigator into the rear of these um, guys just to kind of soften them up a bit more because um, <clears throat> I need them to be softer because they're so hard to kill. Oh, wow, 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 whoa, 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 what's happening here? I'm confused. Was this my turn? Because these guys are still alive on one wound. Oh, there you go. That's what happened to them. There's some weird out of sequence shots there. I do apologize. So just to let you know what happened here, there's an ins <laughs> 22 wounds on them and a double one. Really unfortunate. It's really, really unfortunate for Heath because that... Is just mean that his really scary units are stuck on this unit for another turn, which is exactly what I wanted. So I moved. So yeah, those things I talked about did happen. I did come into the rear of here and I did um, charge and bang these guys. I moved up my. Uh, there's no point in charging. I'm not going to do anything. So I moved them here because what this means is they're going to have to come to here. It's actually a strategic error for me because it means that I when then won't be able to see them. So it's not a great move. Poor. What I should have done is moved them like this much much better move because then i can see you and flank you with the fanatics but i didn't so there <laughs> whoopsie daisy on me so yep so the dragon then um took a hindered flank into these guys and the front here also handy puts me out of favor ironheart's line of sight uh instigator into the rear of these guys and i counter charge this horde so and I think I'm going to try and... Will I be able to bolt throw these guys? Oh, yeah, I'm on a hill, so I can. So another round of bolt throws into this horde. And they blast them off. So finally we get bolt throw them off. Bolt throws have been spectacular this game. Spectacular. Get rid of that horde. Look how de <laughs> they're despairing the standard barrier is. He's fallen over. Uh, so that's great. And I double six. Why did I double six something? What's well, got four wounds and got double six? These guys. No. Did I kill them? Surely not. No, surely not. I didn't. I just wavered them, I guess. Gosh, that's good, isn't it? Well, the double six went on. That's my, my, my dojo dice, by the way. 
Thanks, John Green Jr. Yep, and we kill this Iron Guard Horde here, regiment here. So that's great. Or Bulwarkers, wherever they were. That's great. And then my dragon is now facing... Which way is he facing? This way. Yeah, I guess. Why is he facing that way? I guess because he wants to run over. Maybe. Who knows? <laughs> Maybe I turn him. Turn five for Heath. So it's going to be desperate. He does come into me here. See my strategic area? So I can't see them. Whoops. Uh, these guys say, oh, unit strength over the line. Thanks very much. Don't mind if you do. Um, these guys go back into this hall, this regiment, indomitable regiment, who's just living the dream. Faber comes here. So now he has four unit strength over the line. These guys now come into my regiment because they're headstrong and they've probably passed it, I should think. Um, so these guys on nine wounds, they're probably going to die, which is bad. Ba -ba 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 -ba. How many unit strength have I got? Four. That's five. That doesn't count. So five to four at the minute for me, because these guys aren't over the line. But they will be soon, maybe. Anyway, they die. The foot guard die, so he's got that horde, which is great for him. Not quite sure why I kept my dragon facing this way. That seems crazy. There you go. And of course he does kill, so now he's got seven unit strength over the line because they just run forwards on their four wounds. That's bad. Um, oh, look, I cheat. Well, that's horrific of me. Surely I can't see them. Oh, Heath, I am sorry. Because look, look at that line of sight. There is no way in hell I can see them. Poor. Oh, well. It wasn't intentional, put it that way. Sorry, Heath. I have cheated terribly there. Anyway, so I uh, illegally multi-charge this regiment with some fanatics. So there you go. After he did nine wounds to me. <clears throat> That's embarrassing. So the instigator looks over here and says, yes. Can I see that? Can I see that? Yeah, I can definitely see. So he sees over here and he says, I'm going to chaff you up. And does. Um, so what's... Uh, so he's just going to hold up that horde for a bit longer. The dragon turns to face the Brock Lord, and my horde just kind of shuffles this way to be in the be in this corner. Um, so in, in in this half rather. So what do I have now? So we have he's got three there, one there, three there. Right, that's uh, seven. Look at my maths. I've got four here, one here, and I've got down here. I've got two regiment uh, regiment and a horde, which is another six. All right, so that's eleven to seven. If these guys get across, that'll be four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, eleven all. It'll be a draw. Ooh. Ooh. Anyway, he does a wound. Well done him. And then my bolt throwers uh, provide yet another example of how bloody great they are. So we put this uh, three wounds onto these guys and then roll. I roll really well and just knock them off. Imagine Heath's despair. Even worse, I roll so well that one of my miniatures falls off here. And that is really decisive because now I've got six unit strength here, plus four, plus one, which is 11. And Heath uh, has got uh, four, possibly up to eight maximum if these guys just go that way. Um, so that's um, not great. It's just showing the battlefield now, so that's what's happening. Bolt throwers, they're good. Arbalest, whatever they're called. And that was the end of the game. So uh, into turn six. Yep, so I've just taken a photograph at the end of turn six. Um, because there wasn't a lot more that could be done, basically. You know, the Brock Lord isn't going to kill anything because everything else is fine. Uh, yep, yeah, so um, looks like I both cheated and got very lucky. <laughs> so Heath had some terrible dice. Very good game. Um, I did manage to chaff him up long enough and to take advantage of a couple of small errors and then cheat at the end. Um, to, to, to push over the line. If I hadn't, so if I hadn't been able to charge with the fanatics, he probably would have killed my militia mob this turn, which would have given him so three off of me. So 11, 10, 9, I would have been on eight, and he would have been on three, six, seven. Ah, depends if that horde, which is it, not over the center line, is it the horde that's on the instigator? So yeah. So although I did cheat, it wasn't that instrumental, so apologies. Cool, uh, let's go on to game two. Okie dokie, into game two. Game two was versus James. Um, before I reached James, uh, two of his clubmates said, Oh, you're playing James, he's, he's pretty new. Be nice. 
I'm like, I'm always nice. Why would you say that? And when I reached James, he said, I've just won my first game of Kings of War. And I was like, oh, okay, cool. And I saw his list and I'm like, what? Um, so his list is awful. Not awful as in bad, awful as in terrifying. Um, so it has, uh, this isn't awful, uh, a horde of ghouls with a helm of confidence. Uh, two regiments of succubi. Uh, one with a lurker upgrade, which I think gives them Pathfinder. Um, and Thunderous. Oh, and then the Helm of Drunken Ram to give them Thunder 1. Uh, and the other one has Brew of Strength. Uh, Horde of Mollocks. Just a naked Horde of Mollocks. Oh, with a Despoiler Champion for Brutal and Vicious and things. Uh, Regiment of Abyssal Horsemen. Best Horsemen in the game. With Boots of Striding. A Horde of Tortured Souls with a Sanguinary Scripture for Life Leech 3. Uh, Seductress with a now obligatory Gnome Glass Shield. Uh, and also Knowledgeable and Host Shadow Beast 3. So that is a nice beat stick. 170 points though, that ain't cheap. And then two Archfiends, count them. Two Archfiends, so nine drops, very low. Uh, but everything in that is punchy as hell. Okay, apart from the Abyssal Ghouls. Eh, possibly Torch Souls. Torch Souls though, not bad still. So yeah, that is a very, very hitty list. I think if I had a trash army, I maybe would eat it alive. Anyway, this was, uh, so we're playing Hold the Line, which is the scenario where uh, the center of the battlefield is split into three, like yay, right? Three sections. The center section is worth, uh, I want to say, three points. And then each end section is worth two. Unit strength in section uh, wins. Okay. So we have a big biscuit hill here in the middle, height three. We have two um, not bad little cardboard pieces of terrain here, the height, I want to say height six. Uh, we have height nine forest, little mantic forests here, nicely painted. I recognize the work of uh, Scott, maybe not Scott, don't know, maybe it is. Uh, two very, very long walls, these are height two walls. And then some height, I don't know what it is, let's call it flat. Um, difficult to find here. So yeah, reasonably empty battlefield, uh, but um, not bad. Um, and in we crack. So we deploy like this. Um, so I, um, so this is his ghouls, Archfiend here, Archfiend here. Okay. Horsemen, Succubies, Mollocks, Tortured Souls. Very simple. And the Succubi Lurker is here. So I've gone with, I've put my... Um, whatever they're called, Militia Mob, up against the Ghouls, because they're pretty similar. I've got my Wall of Foot Guard here with the um, with the Monarch here. And I, I remember I did it wrong. I thought, oh, I've done that wrong. I think this one was supposed to be here. Anyway, and I've got Fnatic, Fnatic, Fnatic. This is the Sharpness Fnatic, because they can still go through the woods and hit on threes. Two Bolt Throws here to kind of cover the field. I really wanted to be shooting at um, this guy all game. He hit him. Um, and I've got all three flyers down here. Um, so we have General, uh, the Hero, and the um, <clears throat> whatever he's called, Fanatic guy. I really should remember my own army. I've just literally been talking about it. Anyway, um, so the plan here is I want to be distracting. These guys are very much a distraction. So all three of them, because the big, the scariest thing is, is the is the Archfiends. Right, so if I can, and, and this kind of flyer goes, we've got three flyers each. If I can use my three flyers to distract his three flyers while I kind of break his punchy stuff on my very defensible things with high nerve, I can then punch back with fanatics, right? And hopefully uh, win, win the day. That's my plan. Off we go. There's his army. Okay, nice dude. Nice guy. Very nice guy, I would say. And here's my army. Uh, you don't need to see that anymore unless you want to see it. You're very welcome to. There's my guys down the end there. And turn one. I win turn one. Hurrah! Which is really... If he, if he won turn one, that's really bad news for me because um, it's very, very fast and very hitty. So I come really forward as far as I can. So I'm just staying out 20 from this uh, this uh, Archfiend. 20 here. And I'm hiding uh, the instigator. I remembered um, behind the edge of this building. In case anything comes up here, we can just multi-charge, right? And the plan really is to hop over the back and start causing havoc. 
Everything else just plunders forward, a little bit further forward with the monarch, just to provide a little bit of a, a threat. Nothing very exciting. There we go. So I think I shoot this guy. I think there's, there were some wounds. I can't remember anymore. Oh, maybe I missed. Anyway, I missed him. However, ter in a terrified way, <laughs> he runs away with him. And I was like, ah, oh, good. That's exactly what I want. Because his response, he runs away that guy, that way with the Archfiend. Everything else is he stays out of range of 14 here. A lot to be afraid of there. And the Monarch only got 10 attacks. Uh, his Archfiend just comes into this terrain. The Monarch's into the woods, so he's just trying to stop himself being charged without being hindered. Everything else plops forward. Turn two, very quick when he got a melee army. So he's moved so far forward without looking either way that I can chuck my flyers over. Now, he does have his Succubi Lurker here, who is speed 20. So I am running the risk of being charged there. Not that bothered because she's so hitty. I kind of want her to be occupied for a few turns up with these guys. So we do that, we back to back them. I think on reflection, I probably would have back to back them maybe the other way. I don't think he needs to be facing this way. I think I need to be facing this way because being in the rear of these Molochs is lovely. Actually, if, if um, I don't know. Well, we'll see. Everything else pushes forward. I push forward a little bit um, cautiously. I was a little bit too cautiously. I think he had a charge here, maybe. I've invited a charge here deliberately. I could have been braver because even if he kills one thing, there's three more things ready to come in and punch him. So I think I should have just pushed further. I do two wounds, two wounds with my uh, bolt throws onto the Mollocks and I waver them. There's a double six there, which is extremely good news, especially given I'm in the back of him. However, I think we're going to see some flyer prevention here. And because I put the taller unit in front, that means this unit now can't come in here, but the Archfiend will be facing the wrong way. So we'll be facing back this way at this point, as you can see. Um, so what I've had to do, so in his turn, he's, he's decided that these... Very scared of my flyers. He's brought his other Archfiend over, which is kind of what I wanted. So that's going well. He's been distracted. However, I didn't follow up the second part of my plan by pushing further with my line to engage while he's dealing with the stuff back here. So it's going to be an extra turn. And then over on this side, so the Lurker uh, comes into my General. And the Archfiend has turned around to face this way. And she does five wounds, which is uh, tasty. And that's what Ho Shelbys does for you, buddies. <laughs> Very sad times. So on my turn, so I have to counter charge here. We don't play with withdraw in this tournament, otherwise I could have come into the flank of these guys. There you go. Um, and I decided to just kind of throw away my instigator into this archfiend just to hold her off because she's behind a forest, so she can't do anything else for the time being. Then I spot an opportunity. So. He kind of looked at that hindered charge and thought, well, I can probably manage that. But I have got here on Pegasus who sneaked around this building and had a sneaky flank. Now, it's only six attacks, but every little helps, right? These guys would be 12 attacks on four. So maybe it's not great. Not great shout, is it? Three or four wounds, but this is six attacks on threes. Uh, with crush one, maybe three or four more wounds. We'll see how we do. I think I had rather too high hopes. Um, and on this side, I do what I should have done last turn, which is put myself within charge range of lots of things, and I preserve angles, right? So everything here can see everything else. So no matter what he charges, I've got a good charge next turn. So I'm very much inviting him to come in. Um, and then uh, just that's me complaining about my dice. <laughs> my bolt throw is missing everything. What was I shooting? Mollocks again, these guys, right? Anyway, boo-hoo me. I do get a Bane Charn off to improve, improve the odds there. Uh, and I do three wounds on the on the Succubi Lurker and then double one it. So that's fun. Three wounds off of Defense 6. Ain't bad, I would say. Three wounds on this Archfiend. Eight wounds is pretty good, but I don't do enough to hurt them. So that is uh, very sad. Especially with Life Leech 3. So they're going to get all that back and I'm going to get flanked. Into turn three. Turn three. Uh, so yeah, well that was turn three. Uh, just dice out of turn. He's pointing dynamically at a thing. Is that a flank he's saying? Yes, it is, buddy. Anyway, he takes the bait. He goes for it. He comes in. Which I would like him to do last turn, uh, but I was stupid. 
there you go, that happens. So uh, the ghouls take a hindered charge into my um, um, militia mob, which is great because now they're hitting on sixes. Um, the horsemen come into my uh, monarch, which is exactly where I want them because the monarch's got the highest nerve. These guys don't come into anything because they couldn't reach. He just puts them there, I think, to try and protect the flank of this unit, which is not going to work because I can still come in. These guys come up on the hill. So quite pleased with this positioning because it gives me... The, I mean, these guys are ensnaring, but I do hit on threes pretty much universally. So uh, these guys, if they charge, will be hitting on fives. That's pretty what he's thinking of there. But this is a flank. So that's going to be very, very painful for them. Uh, this is not a rear, by the way. I just turned it around so it'll fit. So they've countercharged the hero on Pegasus. Moloch's come in to flank this unit of foot guard. That's all bad. Can pretend that didn't happen. That's my general. is now dead because he took both the Archfiend and the Lurker into it. This guy's okay. He hasn't done the rolling yet. Seven wounds, but he's alive. Couldn't roll a seven once. Uh, and wavered my hero on Pegasus with two wounds. Two wounds is pathetic. So um, there you go. Unfortunately, Moloch's in the flank. No one likes that. No, it's, it's not fair. Yeah. Okay, good. Wavered my Monarch. That's, I mean, they had Boots of Striding. I think he used them. So 11 wounds is pretty gross off of... Is it 18 attacks on those horses? It's a lot anyway, isn't it? Especially with just Crush 1, Thunder 1. Whatever. Good rolling, my son. Not my son. Whatever. Six wounds there. These uh, militia mobs who should be able to survive two or three turns of that. So here we go. So we um, we take the flank here. The elite, um, they were down here. These fanatics come take a hindered charge into front of them. So they're going to be hitting on fives. That's poor, but I'm just holding them off. Because these guys should explode from so many attacks. I've got a hindered flank into these horsemen. And a hindered front into the horsemen. Expecting decent amount of wounds because these guys have got sharpness. Um, and there's probably a Bane Chant coming. I might miss it though, I think, unless I see a dice. Um, I look at these three targets. I decide I want to distract them some more as long as possible, keep them out of the game. The instigator comes into the now gnome glassless um, uh, uh, succubus lurker to see if I can finish her off. And is back up to keep these guys out of the game as well. He can have this segment. I don't want it. So there we go. Um, and that's bolt throwers. So bolt throwers do three wounds. Yay! Still don't manage to kill them though. That's a shame, isn't it? They're on six wounds already. So they they regen. They life leech back down to six. Another three wounds. And so now they're on nine. I still don't manage to get them. Um, and then I make a mistake. And the mistake I make is I counter charge. The militia mob um, counter charge the ghouls. This was silly. I'm not going to do anything to them, as you see. Only four wounds. And it enables them to countercharge me on fours next turn. Or on fives again, on fives next turn. So fives and threes is bad. Sixes and threes is survivable. I should have just backed up an inch. I didn't. Um, only five wounds is terrifically poor. I'm terrifically poor, I would say. Um... So very disappointing from this front and flank. And that's 30 attacks on fours. Fours and fives. I think, yeah, because I failed my Bane Chant. So it should be 15... should be five wounds just from these guys. And there's 15 attacks on threes. Let's say 10. And then fours, another five. So they should... They, they had half the wounds that you might expect. Um, um, and then it could an, an easy six once to get rid of them, Right? So that was a really bad round for me. Very, very disappointing. But I did manage to wipe out the other, the other succubi. So I've got my horde, unwounded now, facing that way. These guys can't move. They're stuck uh, because of the positioning. So they're facing this way for the time being. In two, James is round four. So he decides to just eat this guy, which is fair enough. Why not? Um, and then so, um, these elite... Uh, uh, fanatics. Did I do any wounds? I did five wounds to the succubi. Um, hindered as well, which is pretty good. Um, but that did mean, obviously, I didn't kill them. They regened all the wounds. 
Oh, no, I didn't. There's some there. I think they regen a couple of them. Um, and then I took a flank from Moloch. So the second flank in the game from Moloch's not great. Um, the other Archfiend that wasn't engaged with my... Um, he, I didn't distract him long enough, so... This guy, so I think this Succubus... Uh, this uh, Archfiend went in along with the uh, Lurker. And this Archfiend uh, came into the Horde down here. Like that. Yeah? Um, the Horseman... Uh, counter charge my sharpness fanatics counter charge from the ghouls and um, these um, tortured souls ate my hero on pegasus and they're now just going to sit there for the rest of the game I think yep so that happened oh, I actually didn't um, I wonder where the other archfiend went oh I think the other archfiend came this way and he just let the lurker on its own to kill my so distraction failed there she is so she's sauntered over here in her distractingly, uh, <laughs> distractedly uh, unclad way to start eating bolt throws. Bolt throws have been doing a terrible job this game. I have not been able to roll well at all. At all. Apart from that three wounds, they've just missed. So I'm shooting bolts at this lady like every turn and she's just like that. Nah, thanks. Anyway. And so yeah, that happened. Really disappointing. So because of that counter charge, they then had... Um, 25 attacks on fives and threes, and that he just rolled out the box, rolled out the box, took off my uh, uh, militia mob, which was very sad because uh, I've got a really big problem on that side now. Six wounds on the fanatics. Um, everyone's looking a bit sad. So, uh, and then obviously those uh, other fanatics exploded because they got mollocked, mollocked in the flank, and the archfiend did a few wounds, six wounds to my horde, which is pretty good. Uh, threes and twos, it's kind of roughly-ish what you might expect, I guess. So, yeah. Into turn five, and it's starting to look a little bit tense. Uh, yeah, we're going to shooting Archfiends and desperately hoping they die. No, they don't. Spoiler warning. I do three wounds, though, which is rather nice. Um, and then over this side, so um, we just chuck everything into these horsemen because they have to die. They've been regening like crazy. Um, I couldn't do any wounds to them, so I just send everything into them. I do get a nice flank. So the Archfiend that came in, this is quite a nice thing. So because of the positioning, the Archfiend came in here, which means that if I, rather than, rather than counter charging, I just choose a fresh charge, it's a flank, right? So that's going to be 50 attacks on threes. And if I get a Bane Chant off, it'll be fours, if not fives. Uh, the Fanatics try to take off these in the ensnaring fellas, seductresses, whatever they are. Oh, that's a seductress, not a lurker. I've been calling it a lurker. It's a seductress. I apologise. And uh, we just... Yeah, so they were coming to these fanatics. We're going to get Moloch next turn. But by that point, I have my horde. So we'll see how we go. Uh, it's just showing all of that stuff. And I, get, I do get a Bane Chant off. Hooray! So now we're 50 attacks on threes and fours. Surely I can do it this time. Uh, <laughs> so... I've chucked everything into these invincible horsemen. They really are the best cavalry in the game. And um, they were down to three wounds. You can see there, they're up to 19 wounds, and I double won it. Oh, man, that was... That didn't feel great after some turns of bad dice and poor decisions. The one there was uh, particularly galling. Anyway, I did kill the Archfiend in the middle. I didn't even take a picture. I was so sad. <laughs> it's turn five. So then this Archfiend, who's now on four wounds from bolt throwing, uh, comes down to start eating bolt throwers. <sighs> the Sharpness Fanatics take a flank from the Ghouls. Hindered flank, so sixes. Let's see how that happens. I'm on six wounds already. Uh, his uh, Abyssal Horsemen regen uh, six of their wounds, which puts them under devastated again. And they go back into my Monarch, who is already on 11 wounds. So that's not great. Yep, she eats. Yum, yum. Sharpness fanatics die. Ah! Eaten by ghouls. How ignoble. Awful. And the monarch dies as well. So now it's looking really rather desperate. And you can see that the archfiend did die from my uh, from my uh, foot guard. And obviously my fanatics died to the monarchs in the flank. Into turn six. So this is what we're looking like in turn six. And apologies, my photos are getting a bit sparse at that point but if you think about the scenario which is these sections right like this and he sent his archfiend off down here which is fine she's worth two unit strength so he's got this one he's got 
two unit strength guarantee because he's got his tortured souls who refuse to die despite being shot and beaten up three turns in a row. Now in the center, I think it's about here, I've got four unit strength. Um, he's got six, so three from these guys, three from these guys, right? And I've got three unit strength here. This is three and this is three. So I should be able to kill these horsemen. They must surely die. And then I don't think I'll die from these guys, right? Theoretically, theoretically, right? Um, so that means that we would equal this one. This would be out, right? Three each. And then in the center, my um, hordes on five wounds, I should get a life leech of one, should kill the succubi. And then if I can survive a charge from these two guys, I would win. Right? Because that's three to two. So even though the dice have gone poorly, still got a chance, still in the game. Pretty happy. Well, not happy. I'm slightly nervous, very tense actually. <laughs> and we kill the horseman <laughs> at last. 20 wounds. I'm just like, die, just die. And they do. And I kill the succubi, life leech back down to one. Okay, so now we are in a winning position as of uh, top of turn six. So bottom of turn six, here we go. What we're going to do? So uh, yeah, Archfiend eats another war engine. Why not? Here they go. In they come. And she just kind of stands there, looking pretty. She ate it. Well, you know, I tried, and that's the most important thing. So yeah. So let's see. Uh, Mollocks came in. I was on four wounds. So the Mollocks and the uh, uh, Seductress. Did uh, 12 wounds between them, which is not really an unprecedented amount of wounds. Put him up to 16. Uh, 21, 23. He needed a 7 twice. And he rolled a 7 twice. And so at the end of the game, um, I did survive the other one. But uh, sadly, he wins uh, 4 points to 3. So yeah, that was his second ever victory. <laughs> I was like to his friends, why did you tell me to be nice? <laughs> his list is a beat stick um, I do think I had some bad luck in that game I would say I don't like to blame dice um, I did make you know th that mistake on the bottom left was horrific for me uh, definitely I think lost the game basically because that would um, if I'd have held back another turn he wouldn't you know my sharpness guys would have survived and they're very very powerful so yeah lessons learned on to game three Okay, so we crash into game three, so I've won one, lost one. You think I might have a bit of an easier time? But no, I find I am facing the Boogeyman list. The list everyone was scared of. Uh, this is lovely Alistair, who is a giant of a man. He's about 12 foot 7 tall. Um, and he's brought Forces of Abyss again. But this time, let's have a look at it. Oh boy. Oh boy. So it's two troops of gargoyles, two regiments of abyssal horsemen, the best cavalry in the game, uh, one of which has the staying stone, ten regiments of tortured souls. That's ten regiments of tortured souls. And then uh, another seductress with exactly the same loadout, known glass shield, knowledgeable host, shadow beast three. So, you know, it's a lot of flying. You know, it's not, I mean, the horsemen are terrifying. It's just, you know, if you're to face this list, the angles kill you. Right, that's what gets you, because at the end of the day, 10 regiments of torture souls is very, very hard to defend against. So, off we go. Um, so this is the battlefield, it'd be all right, wouldn't it? Because they all hit on fours with nine attacks, right? So probably lots of terrain so I can force them to land on hit on fives. Nope, I have the worst battlefield it's possible to have. I think yeah, possibly ever, anyway. Um, not a fan of this battlefield. Um, also, the table was was not very great. So, um, yeah, it's their first tournament. We'll, we'll let them off. But this, this trestle table was not. Well, you can see there's a huge, there's a huge like ravine here, <laughs> which is really hard to deal with. Anyway, I won't complain. I'm sure I've done worse in my tournaments, but uh, this one wasn't great. But next time we'll be fine. Uh, two forests. This is a forest. This is a forest height nine. Um, these are walls. Long walls here, height two, and these are blocking terrain, height six. That's it. That's all the terrain. <laughs> Nothing. I, I'm just very glad that he wasn't like shooting elves or something. In which case, you just have no chance. This giant killing zone here. 
But anyway, so I didn't really have much chance. We're playing Fool's Gold. That's the one where you have bluff tokens uh, and you turn over the bluff tokens at the end of turn three. Okay. So um, I put all three of my sets of tokens here. So I think this is the two. This is the one. This is the one. Right. So my intention is, as you can see here, I castle because against this much flying, you have to just restrict the amount of angles the enemy can do. Um, I did try to fake him out with my um, instigator down here. Uh, it did, it, and he kind of worked. He put three tortured souls against him, which is a lot. You know, that's uh, nearly a third. Uh, so that's great. Uh, and then I'm castled in this corner to really persuade him to not jump over the back of me because or, or get a flank that I just haven't seen because it's impossible not to. Um, I'm going to try and persuade as many of his as many of his um, units as possible to charge in this tiny wood. <laughs> And I'm going to anchor off this rock. That's my strategy. Here's my bolt thrower. It's going to try and shoot stuff. Preferably gargoyles. Uh, yep, that's pretty much it. So I'm going to hope that this one, or maybe this one, not this one, are um, points. And I can win with these four, let's say. Let's give it a go. Uh, that's my army. And that's also my army. And that's also my army. So, okay, sorry, I should tell you. <laughs> I know how to do battle reports. So, Instigate is there, both rows there. So, we have the um, Fanatics. These ones, I believe, are um, uh, Elite. And then we have, or maybe Vicious. And there's the other ones. These ones are the Sharpness Fanatics with the collapsed market stall on their base. Yeah, thematic. There's the Monarch. There's the Standard Bearer. Here's the Three Foot Guard. And over here, we have the Hero on Pegasus, my Militia Mob. And this is the general long winged beast who's currently perching on a rock because the edge of this table is very precarious and I did not want him to plunge to the floor being made of resin because he would shatter. Uh, so um, Alistair owns a um, 3D printing company and he 3D prints stuff. So this whole army is 3D printed very, very quickly and it's very lovely. So this one is a tortured soul. This one is a tortured soul. This one, I won't do it anymore. You get the idea. Uh, gargoyle, Gargoyle, there's the um, Seductress, two horsemen. I do not know which has the Staying Stone. And then three more. Uh, tortured, <laughs> tortured bloody souls. Well, let's crack on. I lose turn one, which is maybe the worst thing that could possibly happen. And he advances uh, very, very fast in a great big line. And that's, uh, that's his go. Staying out of ten for my charge range. Okay. So he's positioned here to try and cover angles, um, which is okay. He's put one in the front saying, charge this one. But actually, I can still charge the one in the back, I believe. Let's find out. So in my go, I do charge the one in the back. I decide, yeah, I can probably, if I take the hero in and the general into that one, I can probably kill it. And I'll turn to face, and then I'll have great angles, I say. These guys have just moved up. Um, I have left him the chance to come this way, which I probably just didn't think about at the time because I was too busy making angles here. Um, so basically, anything he charges is going to have other things that can charge, right? Notice my monarch is facing this way, and this unit is also facing this way. That's um, we're both shielded, so we can't. Nothing can land here. And that's basically to, uh, as he comes down here, which he's almost guaranteed, I've got some really nice angles for charges. So that's the plan. I have left this open for a double charge, which is worrying. Um, one of them might be hindered, so let's see how that goes. And then, ah, yeah, so on the left-hand side, um, he just is slightly mispositioned these three. Let's see if we'll go back and find a show where, he, there. He's left a tiny hero-shaped space here, which means my instigator can I reckon my instigator can solo a regiment of tortured souls right dash 14 same nerve as them more attacks less attacks than them actually actually it's a terrible idea I did it so in he goes let's go boom bolt throwers have a field day on that regiment six wounds instigated two wounds not as good as bolt throwers fact ah sad times Six wounds there from these guys. Um, slightly underperforming, I might say. Uh, maybe not. I don't know, maybe on average. But uh, 
Needed a good roll to take him off, didn't get it. So, yep, yeah, we're going to counter charging and flanking's going on. That's bad. Yep, there's the flank. So, I've protected the general at least. The general should finish off those tortured souls and then he can come and have a play. Uh, so, in those, so, he sent the other tortured souls down here at the double. And this one just took on these uh, militia mob. And then he just kind of went all in. He's like, yeah, I'm going to go for it. So these guys go hindered into the front of my horde, along with their friends. I might survive. Not convinced. Um, you'll notice at this point that the um, seductress is here. He actually changes his mind later and sends her in the middle, which is annoying because I didn't think about that. Gargoyles hindered into these guys will be fine. Torch cells into these guys will also be fine. And then hopefully kill them on the counter charge. Uh, he takes a counter charge here and he just comes to be nice and threatening here. So, Gargoyles coming to one of the bolt throwers, um, which is bad. Let's see how that happens. And yeah, so that's the adjusted position with the Seductress. Uh, unfortunately, it turns out Torture Cells are better than Instigators, or maybe his dummies are better. And he kills my Instigator on the counter charge, which is uh, very sad. And then, uh, where's his wounds gone? Tortured souls have uh, life leech. Sorry. I can't remember, so we're going to go all the way back to look at the list. Whoa, 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 there we go. Uh, yeah, they do. Life leech 2. Life leech 2 for real? R what? <laughs> anyway. <clears throat> so they life leech 2 wins. Sure. Gargoyles, uh, roll out the box for gargoyles and uh, kill a bolt thrower, which is very sad. Two wounds there, we don't care. Oh, that's sad, isn't it? My hero on Pegasus, uh, so noble in previous games, has died on the first charge, which is poor. Four wounds on the general. Two wounds from those guys, we're fine. And that's great, isn't it? 18 wounds. And we live, so we're a 23, 25. So we need a seven twice, which is uh, not a great roll. So uh, I got lucky there. So some good, some bad. Crack onto my turn too. So we go back into that unit. And we have a lovely flank here. So we can see, let's just go back and see if we can see where that is. These guys have a lovely, a delicious line of sight here into the flank of them. So we crack in. Get a lovely flank there. So that should rip off that court torture souls and take care of these guys as well next turn. Counter charge, counter charge. The monarch and um, the horde charge into this one. We're going to take it off in one, so let's give it a go. Put everything we can into that unit of horsemen because they are the scariest unit on the field. I've turned these guys to face this way because this is scary. And over here, I've decided that... So I remember I put my, my fanatics horde here looking out the side. Um, I need to sort something out. So these guys are all height two, so I'm going to kill them. He says, well, they're on six wounds. I'm pretty likely to kill them. I'm fanatics, right? We're a fanatic. And then I'm going to sidestep this way to block their line of sight and force them to charge in. These guys are dead anyway, so it's probably fine. Uh, and then the bolt thrower just uh, shoots something. I think that's probably me showing you the bolt thrower missed, maybe. At point oh, I didn't miss! Oh, I hit it. Point blank range. Did two wounds, and then I rolled a four. And I was so annoyed at rolling a four. They're gargoyles. Uh, I took a screenshot of it. There you go. Got a Bane Chant on the Horde. Very nice. Let's see what we can do. So the General finally manages to polish off that Tortured Soul Regiment. Let's see if he survives another round of Tortured Souls over here. Uh, that's great news. So we've killed that Tortured Souls. Um, I turn my... Oh, I run my Fanatics... Uh, not Fanatics, sorry. Uh, Militia Mob forwards. But I made a mistake with these guys. I left them kind of just facing this way. I really should have faced more this way because these Tortured Souls are going to come in here. And I won't be able to see them. And this was the most disappointing round of combat of the whole game. So five wounds here. Didn't kill them. Even worse. These guys didn't even kill gargoyles on a counter charge. Four wounds. Twelve attacks. Six hits. To be honest, that's over average. So I shouldn't be complaining. Oh, he hit on threes. Uh, Twelve attacks. What was that be for? Eight, eight hits, four wounds. It's bang on average. I still didn't kill them though. Mm. 
poor nerve rolling from me. But I do get a life leech, so I get my points back. I do manage to kill the horses. That's superb. Um, these guys are going to die next turn. I really should have turned the monarch this way, but I did not think. So there you go. Boohoo me. And over here, again, we kill a torture souls. You can see my line of sight here, so I'm out of uh, view of these horsemen. Um, and I don't sidestep because that would have put me in view of the horsemen. I just stay there. So bad things are going to happen. On to Alice's turn three. So this is how it looks. Um, so don't forget, I'm really, I'd, all I care about is these guys, right? So at the moment, things are going okay because he's very much focused over here. Not killing these was poor, but, you know, I think the gargoyles probably should have died. He has got a Torture Souls in reserve and another Torture Souls in reserve, but they're not very hit on their own. There's this guy in the back is bad. So I think teetering on a knife edge of acceptability is what I'd say. So yeah, he does um, what you'd expect. So because I didn't turn these guys, they've just come kind of popped around the corner, which is poor. Both torture souls into the general, which is bad. Uh, two counter charges there. So the torture souls that was in reserve comes into the monarch and the horsemen come into this, um, which is why I didn't turn him if you think about it. Because if I'd have turned him, he would have been flanked by them, which would have been horrific. Um, and you can see here that the Seductress has uh, flown over here to uh, flank these guys with her host shadow beast. That could be very nasty. And then he's taken both tortured souls into this Fanatics regiment. So one is hindered. So I'm confident I'll probably be okay there. And also, do you like my banner? It looks nice, right? <clears throat> and then the other war engine's going to die. And my general carks it. Wah, wah, wah. That's bad news, isn't it? But uh, my militia mob's going to have fun now. There you go. I was confident they would survive, and they did. Seven wounds on them. Uh, they were dash 15. Dash 14? Dash, dash 15. Uh, so we can start murderizing things. And then die next turn. Four wounds on the on the, on the the monarch is a lot uh, for a tortured soldier, I think. But uh, he's still okay. Uh, seven wounds onto these guys. So the... Uh, Host Shadow Beast didn't go off, maybe. I don't know, I can't remember. But it uh, doesn't look great, but we're still we're still alive, we're still okay. And we have got a Fanatics Regiment here in reserve that can do something. I mean, you can't see this chap. Can't see anything, actually. Kind of mispositioned. Anyway. Uh, and a waiver from the Torture Souls. So, second hands of these guys, but we have got Indomitable Will, which we will use. And how about that? Gargoyles fluffed it on the second go. So the, the bolt thrower survived gargoyles, uh, even though... Th that's terrible. Do you know what I think happened there? I think he forgot to triple his attacks. I think about 30 attacks on fours and fours. For to do two wounds is simply unreal. I reckon we both forgot to triple the attacks. But, sorry, Alistair. That is bad news. Uh, and obviously the horde dies to those horsemen, so that's bad for everyone. Um, but you can see here something that's interesting happened. I wonder if I take advantage of it. Looking at it now, I can see the horseman and I can just turn 90 degrees and come this way and hit the horseman with my monarch, which would then allow these fanatics to have line of sight on these tortured souls and I could come into the tortured souls. I probably couldn't because I haven't got the turns. You know what? Let's see. Um, I've turned my monarch. Um, why have I turned my monarch? Maybe he's going to do it. Let's find out. So um, this regiment has, has countercharged these guys. Countercharge, countercharge. We've come into these guys and the other fanatics have come up this way because all I'm interested, don't forget the three tokens over here. Um, and I've turned these fanatics round to um, face these tortured souls. I'm um, hoping these guys will die so I can turn them as well. There's a Bane Chance onto these guys to really make sure they actually do kill them. Um, no, apparently not. Apparently the, the monarch just countercharged these guys and then turned. Maybe that's after I did the combat. Who knows? He murdered them anyway. Go monarch! And now he's providing a nice blocker here so he's still in the front um, to these guys. And you can see over here I have managed to kill one of the tortured souls with them. Uh, three wounds from my militia mob. There's the death of them, so these guys are going to have to come in here. If I'd have thought about it, I could have turned all the way around and faced the rear. 
But that might have been a couple of flanks. Who knows? Whatever. Uh, and then, yeah, finally, finally cleared these two guys. That's great. So these guys have turned as far around as they can to face this way. Don't forget, this is a forest, so these horsemen can't see them. So they're safe from a flank there. Um, these guys are facing here. The horsemen can't do anything, really, apart from hindered charge these guys or front charge the monarch. Still got this seductress hanging around, though, which is annoying. So Alice's turn four. We told oh, this by end of turn three. We turned over the tokens. So you've, I told you where my tokens were. There's a two next to the militia mob. There's one. There's one. So Alistair has a one in the centre next to his horse. It's just behind the forest. So the one I hoped was scoring is. And this one is now a one next to where my fanatics were in the middle. And his two is all the way over to the left where he doesn't have anything. So let's look at that. So this is the two. This is a one. This is a one. And this is my one, one, two. So I'm in a very strong position now. All of a sudden, out of nowhere... It's looking okay. I just need to take care of these horsemen who have now charged. They chose the hindered charge along with the seductress into these guys. That's probably sensible because everything else is facing the wrong way. If I'd have turned these guys around more, this might not have been a problem. But as it is, um, if they kill them, which they're very likely to, we're on six wounds already. We're facing this way. We're facing this way. And he's facing that way. Horsemen, no one can see them. Very bad. Anyway... Um, so the horseman is a problem. However, I'm quite well placed for tokens with these guys. Mm, seven wounds. Let's see. So uh, he comes into them. I just need them to survive. That's all I need. We go, the gargoyles go back into my uh, bolt thrower. So these guys counter charge and these guys leg it to go and sit on this token. Look at these people thinking about scenario. Who does them think they are? Um, so in continuing the avoidance strategies, these tortured soldiers can go this way. So I also think I think he thought he was out of line of sight here, but he forgot about this unit. Because once I come here, that's a rear charge, which I'm going to deliciously take. Uh, yep, so lots of uh, charging there. So nine wounds now, my militia mob. I might even survive. Uh, unfortunately, that foot guard does die, and now his horsemen are in a very, very juicy position. And bad news, the Fanatics do lose uh, their lives uh, to these tortured souls. So my hope on this flank is uh, fading. He's turned his horsemen to face this way. Uh, this might be uh, of benefit because my dragon could charge here and potentially move out of their line of sight. Let's see. Uh, unfortunately, yes, so gargoyles do kill my bolt throws of gargoyles now free to fly. Into my turn force, this is how the battlefield looks. So not many units left on both of our sides. So he's got a Tortured Souls up here, a Tortured Souls here, and a Tortured Souls here. He's got this one as well, but hopefully we'll get rid of that one this turn. Gargoyles here and Horsemen here. All right, so he's definitely winning, right? Because <laughs> I've got Fanatics facing this way, Foot Guard facing this way, and a Dragon facing that way, all facing the wrong direction. I have got my, my scariest unit, Sharpness Fanatics, hiding behind a rock. So they're going to be able to come and help quite soon as well. Uh, unfortunately, the militia mob do block line of sight. And I do not cheat this time. So that's good for me, right? So here's what we do. So there's my standard bearer hiding behind a rock. So we come up this way because I'm mindful now. I need to get on those tokens at the top without any possible thought. So he's likely to those two wounds, which is bad. I have come here, though. So if the torch cells don't die this turn, I have got a flank charge. Um, so, yeah, Vicious Fanatics move out of the way. Um, the only thing that can charge now is a Seductress. Not really worried about that. Um, and we rear charge these Torture Souls. Which is going to put an end to them. And we take the Long Bomb charge here from my Monarch onto these Torture Souls. With the hope that I just need to kill it and then move out of line of sight. There we go. And if I do that, the Monarch can then pretty much move onto this two-point token and turn around. And uh, we might survive the rest of the game. So that's great. Even better news though. My militia mob roll out the box and kill the torture soul. So now very strong on this side, very happy. Uh, bad news though, the dragon does six wounds and I can't roll the. I mean, they're a dash fourteen, aren't they? Or something ridiculous, ridiculous. Uh, so I'd need a double six twice, which is not going to happen. Uh, so yeah, he's going to get rear charged by horsemen, but it does take the horsemen quite far out of the game. So there are potential benefits there. Yeah, and we kill with that flank with a rear charge, so those foot guard are looking good. 
I've left them this way. I wonder if I should have turned them more so I could start moving up to this. I think I would know, because then I was mindful there are gargoyles there, right? I don't want to be flanked by gargoyles. Turn five, so it's getting a bit tasty now. So the seductress comes into flank of these guys to try and finish them off with the host shadow beast action. There's the rear. Don't like that at all. The gargoyles ignore this unit and fly off after tokens. So they want to get scoring, which is probably the right thing to do. Seductress uh, rolls very, very nicely with his host shadow beast. Nine wounds. We were on six previously, previously so only three extra. But uh, it's enough to waver me. And even worse, this is the unit that already used its indomitable will. So we indomitable won't. <laughs> Quite pleased with that. Uh, and then the monarch dies. Long live the monarch. Into my turn five, what can I do? Well, I'm looking at this thinking all is not lost because um, he has four units. I have four units. We are equal in number of units, right? We can only get one each. So Militia Mob's going to move up here and take the one. Sharpness Fanatic's here, going to take the one. These Fanatic's are going to take the two. And I just need this unit. Ah, that's not going to work, is it? That's not what I mean at all. This unit is out of the game. It's dead, right? It's wavered. Forget it. However, he's got these guys here. Hmm. So we're going to kill you, right? Hmm. Kind of playing for a draw. I think what I thought in my head was... Yeah, wasn't really sure. I was considering coming down here and getting this one, but then I forfeit this one, so... Actually, it probably been better. I think, oh, they've got these horsemen, though. They're bloody terrifying. They'll come and kill me. So, yeah. I think I'm playing for a draw. I'm playing for a draw. I'll take the draw. Because I'm going to really get these three, because my, my uh, foot guard are out of the game, right? It's going to be, he's going to get these three. So, these guys are going to come and take this one. We've got horsemen on this one. Gargoyles on this one. Which is four. And I've also got four. So, we're looking at a draw. So... We run up to here. We, this is exactly what I said what happened. Right, so we did it. Um, and we back up these guys to take the structures out of the game. Into turn six. So he does something rather canny. So he looks at it, and Alice is a very good player. He's like, right, I'm not going to let you get away with this. He takes the seductress and plonks her one inch in front of this unit. Flies 20 and plonks her an inch in front of this unit. I'm not going to allow you the charge, he says. So one inch in front of the unit, and then he places these guys here. So on my go, which I think this is my go now, because I'm taking hasty pictures because we're a bit tense, right? Um, so at the end of his go was literally, he moves up there, off you go, everything else moves onto tokens. So um, these guys moved here, these guys moved here, these guys moved here, right? That's it. Um, plonk the seductress here, and then I charge into her. I need to kill the seductress, who still has the gnome glass shield, Right, so despite sharpness, I'm still hitting off fours. Kill her, overrun enough, kill them, overrun. That's what needs to happen for me to draw, otherwise I lose. Um, I move these guys up because I have some kind of vague suggestion I might get through. I don't, they're too far away. Um, two wounds is all I do, and that's the end of turn six. So at the end of turn six, I lose. It's four, uh, three. Actually, 5-3, because he gets this one. However, there is a turn seven, my fine friends. So what I need to do now is so the seductress can hit me, and she does, but doesn't do enough damage. I then need to kill her, <laughs> and I need to overrun and kill them, and I've run again. Right, so this is where we are. Um, so we're holding this token, we're holding this token. These guys can't get anywhere. So I need to kill her. Overrun and kill him. Do I do it? Well, he moves. Here's what he does before I do it. He moves the tortured souls closer. <coughs> I think this was a mistake in a rush because if you see on this way, if I kill the seductress and overrun, I'm going to hit the tortured souls here and be hindered. The way he moves them closer together, um, now when I overrun and hit the tortured souls, I'm no longer hindered. So now I'm hitting them on twos. If I kill the seductress, 
I'm, I'm hitting them on twos. And then I just need to roll a four. The way he was positioned before, much better, I think. Anyway. Uh, that's just showing where his other units are. Do I do it? That's her, that's her wounds on me. Yes, I do. <laughs> okay, that's right. I was trying to build a bit of dramatic tension there, but uh, my screenshots weren't helping. I do. I do. So the second, I mean, the problem is, is that then the Gnome Guard shield is gone. I'm not hindered. I wasn't on fours. I was hitting on threes, right? Because of um, ensnare. All right, so threes and fives were the first time, which is why I only did two wounds. Uh, but then it was threes and twos. Um, and I absolutely annihilated her. I did the one inch over of tortured souls, and then I'm hitting on twos and threes, and I absolutely annihilated them. And I rolled a four for my overrun, and as you can see, right onto the token for a very tightly won draw. So yeah, great game, great game, great guy. Uh, love playing Alistair. Horrible list. Uh, shame on you. <laughs> uh, so that's one, one, and one. I am on now. So let's see how I do in game four. And so into game four against David. This is, uh, I'm on one win, one loss, one draw. David is actually one of the organizers of the tournament and a very, very nice man he was too. Um, and a much nicer table we played on this time as well, so it's all good. And he was playing Ratkin, which made my soul glad because I think genuinely in my heart, I'm still a Ratkin player. The Ratkin are definitely in the cupboard for a long time right now, but... Uh, I do love a Ratkin list. I keep going back to my old Ratkin lists that I've never played. I'm thinking they're really good and I really should. I just found a, an old Tunnel Runner list that I think looks just beastly. Anyway, this was his list. So he had uh, a regiment and a horde of spear warriors, and both of which with plague bots. And um, one with brew. So the horde had brew of sharpness, making they hit on fours. Um, not sold on that, to be honest, but, uh, you know, whatever. Um, a troop of claw shots with a piercing arrow that I'm fairly certain he forgot for the entire game. A horde of the nightmares, they're very good, uh, with Helm of the Drunken Ram to give them the Thunder 1. A uh, regiment of hat paws with pipes of terror to give them brutal. Uh, two regiments of Bermintide, uh, a regiment of tunnel runners with the boots of striding. Uh, weapon team, two root mutant rat fiends, do love a mutant rat fiend, a warlock with lightning bolt, um, a swarm crier with a sacred horn because the swarm criers now have an elite aura for tech, uh, which in this case affects the um, nightmares, right? Just the nightmares. Oh, and the tunnel runners. Yeah, okay. Um, and then a broodmother with a blight star for an extra shooting attack. Um... Not my favourite racking list, I'm going to say. I think it's there's some uh, spear warriors. I think is oh, you know phalanx is probably a bit of a waste of time. Sharpness on the horde is is odd. I'd probably put sharpness onto ton of runners, which make, it makes them incredibly fearsome. Um, and then you can use uh, striding elsewhere. But uh, you know, your mileage may vary. We'll see how we go. So the vermintide, I think vermintide area is super good. Seen some all Vermintide lists recently that got me kind of excited. Um, so we are playing Dominate on this little table. Um, so we have this. Here, imagine the Dominate is where you have a ooh, not like that, a twelve-inch circle like that. Let's say in the centre, we have a wood and a wood here, and we have a blocking. And I'm going to say blocking here. Yep. Uh, we say difficult terrain, difficult terrain, probably flat-ish. Uh, a single height to wall here, and then a little, little dollop of a hill over here. Right. So we're playing dominate. So we're um, just going to wang into the centre, basically. So I've just kind of, I've, I'm, I'm happy with this kind of scenario going on here because he put his tunnel runners over here. Tunnel runners hitting on fours means you really want them in a place where they're not going to be facing obstacles. If I was going to place Tunnel Runners, I'd place them solidly here so they can come up and absolutely mince things. Uh, Nightmares here is a great placement because and he's got his Swarm Cry here for Elite for both of them, which is absolutely great. Good placement. Nightmares can sit in this pond and shoot you all day, which is lovely. 
Although, um, you see, how with the Drunken Ram, probably not a great choice for them. Because if you're going to place them in terrain to shoot, then they're going to lose the Drunken Ram when they charge. That's what I thought. That's the weapon team. Um, we have Spear Warriors. Here's his shooty guys. Vermintide Broodmum. He's put both of his um, mutant rat feeds over here. Isn't it nice to see an all mantic rat kid army? I think it's really nice. Uh, and his hat pulls over here on the right. So, I think um, mutant rat fiends in this just here, probably not great. Um, okay, I get it, because they can come swing round with Strider over this wall. But all the same, you'd want them in the middle of your team because of their radiance of life onto the Vermintide. But um, I've got my kind of big solid block of foot guard here. Usual deployment, so I've got Sharpness Fanatics here. I have altered it slightly in that I've decided to use my Militia Mob, which are, after all, chaff, as actual chaff for a change. Because I've looked at all of this stuff and I thought, hmm, I wouldn't like them to charge my stuff. They can charge the Militia Mob instead. Got my Bolt Throwers in a wood, so I can just shoot things down here all day. More Fanatics here in a Monarch. And then I put my uh, General and Winged Beast with the Instigator here against the Hack Paws because I think I can beat them. Uh, and they're equivalent in speed. So uh, let's go. Uh, this is his army looking very nice. Very, very nice. I do like that Mutant Rat Fiend model. And there's his Hack Paws. And here's my guys. You've seen enough of my guys already, right? But I want to once again point out that I hand painted the dragon. Onto every single shield. Please appreciate me. And on the banners. You know. It's, uh, salve my ego. So I win turn one, which is very good. Um, so it allows me to really put my, push myself forward into a dominant position. Which I do. And then I shoot his weapon team with my bolt throws and do three wounds. But unfortunately, I don't get rid of it, which is sad. He responds so very aggressively, he pushes the hack paws all the way forwards. As if to say, come on then, you, you want to go? I'd have been tempted, if I was him, to put my hack paws into the woods like that. So that if I charged him, I would be hindered. Just a thought. Uh, and then he kind of uh, patchily pushes forward here. So he's kept this one back and this one forward in the Mutant Rat Fiends. And again, this, I think Mutant Rat Fiends really need to be in the centre of your battle line. Uh, uh, and then forward here, so he's relying on his shooting. And again, so Tunnel Runners behind a wall is bad, uh, but Nightmares in a, in a pond is good. So yeah, so that's some, some, some early shooting there, some hindered shooting because he moved into the pond. So just a single wound, which uh, we laugh at. Notice we, I put my horde right up on a hill. Um, but uh, patchy shooting from across there, that's I think the um, claw shots have done two wounds there onto this regiment and into my turn two. So I just push forward. I've been slightly less aggressive. What I've done is I've offered him the militia mob. I said, go on then. You can charge my militia mob with everything. You see the rulers there. See this 12 inch ruler, but you can't charge these guys just yet. I think I maybe offered the horde as a charge here. And obviously these guys can do what they want, but I'm not particularly worried about them charging on fives. Uh, what's that showing? I don't know. It's showing the fact that I've hidden <laughs> my standard bearer, maybe? Maybe I'm shooting with... Um, I don't know. But over here, I've, I've decided that um, I'm not worried about hack paws. I've sent my um, instigator into the front of them to strip their thunderous. And I bought my hero on Pegasus. You see the line of sight, the arc of sight here. Hero on Pegasus ready for the flank. I'm fairly confident they won't kill him in one go, in which case we can start chomping on the bit. And then I've flown my general on Winged Beast all the way over behind this wood to be incredibly threatening down the flanks. Uh, okay, and that, I don't know what's that showing. But um, so, yeah. Oh, that's bolt throwers onto these claw shots. Uh, claw shot, single claw shot is probably not enough. I think two claw shots is good. And then the instigator absolutely rolls out of the box. Two wounds, and then he wavers them with a casual 10 on the nerve. That's really bad news for the hat paws there. So into his turn two. This is how the battlefield looks. 
So he kind of reacts a little bit, so um, he turns this Mutant Mutant Fiend and backs it up to kind of protect the flank of these guys. And he decides that he's not worried about this one because there's no line of sight here. So he moves it forward, ready to come into the flanks here, which is a really good move. Uh, he sends his Horde with Sharpness into my Militia Mob. And he kind of positions himself here, and I think he activates his Plague Pots. Maybe that's why that's there. Um... And then he's ready to just shoot everything. So he's got a weapon team, nightmares, and a warlock that I'm going to say is this guy to shoot my horde on the hill. And boy, do they! Nine wounds, and then he rolls a double six to waver them. Uh, much sadness on my behalf. And then he also... So th this is a worse waver for me, really. So it's my turn three now. But... Um, this militia mob being wavered is particularly poor. There's not a lot of things I can do. So this regiment, I can't, it's not a flank, it's a front. And I can't get in the front. Nothing else can charge them, so that's particularly bad. Maybe these guys could charge them if I got these guys out of the way somehow. But I think I, I kind of play with it and couldn't. I have to use my indomitable will to get rid of this waver. But I've got lots of options, so let's see what I do. So this is where we end up. So... We ignore the horde and say, well, you have to just charge me again. I charge the regiment here and the monarch into this um, plague potted uh, um, spear warriors regiment. We're hit, we all hit on three, so we're now hitting on fours. Let's see what we do. Um, and then I measure here, there's a slight mismeasurement from David here, so that we are within 10. So I send the horde into this war machine, which means I get to roll 75 <laughs> dice. Uh, sure. I then I move this regiment forward and I allow the tunnel rods. Now they have got the boots of striding, which I forgot about when I was talking about earlier. So he is going to be able to kill this regiment possibly with 24 attacks on fours. But then I've got my scariest regiment of fanatics to counter charge. Counter charge, new charge. Okay, so and then over here, so the general goes into the flank of the vermin tide. The best place for him to go really because it places him out of line of sight of the meat rat fiend. And then we go in with uh, both units back into these claw, into these very, very unfortunate hack paws. So that's uh, seven wounds onto the Vermintide from the General on Winged Beast, and I do kill them. And then I roll a nine or an eight, apparently, to kill the hack paws on whatever damage I've done them, so they're gone too. Uh, that's. Uh, so I managed to roll reasonably well into the Plague Potted Spear Warriors. Um, 12 damage, which is a lot really, isn't it? And then uh, they, they pop. The War Machine also pops. So we take out a good core of the force on this turn. Yeah, so pretty happy about that. Into turn three for the Ratkin. This is how it looks now. So he's going to be able to finish off the Militia Mob this turn. Oh, excuse me, yawning. He's also got a problem with my general in the back here, but I've positioned here, you can see it's in front for this mutant rat fiend. I don't know if he fits here or not, but uh, it's probably better taking a flank here. This is going to happen. This is going to happen. Let's see what happens. So, yep. So he takes the um, boots charge into these guys. He charges into these guys already on nine wounds. So that could be dangerous for me. He takes the flank, like I, spent, like I said. And then he goes into, he also takes the Broodmother into the flank of this horde as well to kind of just really make sure it's going to die. Um, and then he, so he moves this Mutant Rat Fiend forward so that he's out of the line of sight of my general, which is a good move. He is within flank range of my hero, but six attacks doesn't do much to a dash 18. All right, so the Tunnel Runners do unfortunately evaporate my sharpness fanatics, my scariest unit. Oh no, that's my sharpness fanatics. It was a foot guard unit, wasn't it? A foot guard unit, which means my sharpness fanatics get a charge off a hill into them, uh, which I'm going to very much enjoy. And uh, a really unfortunate rolling again for David. So previously there were nine wounds. They get all the way up to 17. So he does a good eight wounds to them. Uh, unfortunately, they are a da uh, 23, 25. He wavers them, and I don't have any Indomitable Will because I already used it, so I am stuck there. And then he kills my Militia Mob, and he overruns enormously uh, with the Horde of Spear Warriors right into my Standard Bearer. 
giving a nice kind of charge range for this mutant rat fiend here. So, what do we do? Well, it's turn four. Let's have a look. So, I mean, these two fanatics are going to have to come in here, pretty much. We should see for them. Uh, what have we got? I think, yeah, so this is a turn when basically I use most of my charges for positioning. So I'm really still conscious centers here. That's what we're aiming for. So I, I have to take this charge. I really hope I manage to kill them. Now, these guys aren't moving, so I just block everyone up here. And then I send my monarch and this regiment of uh, foot guard into this vermintide, really to put them in a better position. Likewise, the general comes into the warlock to get into a better position. Um, these guys are going to uh, kill off uh, these spear guard, hopefully, to be a better position. And these guys position behind here. So a lot of positioning this turn. And that's bolt throwers not doing very much. That is, oh, this is my failed bane chant. So I pop my standard bear on the hill and I fail to bane chant, which is bad. I am still crushed one thunder one. So still wounding on threes. So hitting on twos, wounding on threes. Um, anyway, so two fanatics takes care of the spear warriors. That's great. I position uh, thusly. We also kill the vermintide here. So there's three avenues for this mutant rat fiend. Don't think you can see these guys. You can see these guys, but it uh, as a front. Uh, and if he charges, he's going to get flanked anyway. It's bad. Four wounds on the warlock, which is nice from the general. Onto his turn four. So the warlock backs up. So this brood mother backs up. So I think probably to drain life. He chooses this charge with his mutant rat fiend. I, by the way, I don't kill here. So even though twos and threes, fifteen attacks on twos and threes, I think I do six wounds which is not even close to average. So he's got a lovely counter charge there. Um, where's this other moon map thing come from? Oh, it's over here, isn't it? All the way up there. Anyway, it comes down to the wall. Deciding to ignore this. And present himself to this. So I'm gonna shoot you with a bolt throw. There's three wounds from Drain Life, which is pretty good for a Broodmother. Um, yeah, Sharpness Fanatics die to these guys, which is bad times. Um, also, uh, the Horde finally dies. It should have died last turn, really, so it's not really that surprising. It's fine. Five wounds there. We don't mind that. Into turn five. So turn five, we're looking like this. Reasonably good position. I've got a lot. These guys are dead. Obviously, they're not here. Um, I've got six unit strength here, three unit strength here, two unit strength here. He's got four unit strength between these guys. That's one unit strength. I've got another one over here, by the way. Um, three and three. But these guys are very scary, so I need to basically start throwing things into those units to hold them off, which is what I do. So um, the General Moon Beast, um, he does try to, get him to hit me with his uh, Warlock. It doesn't work. And so I fly into the flank of the already wounded um, tunnel runners. That should be relatively devastating with Crush Tooth Thunder 1. The Monarch comes into the front of the Nightmares. Uh, my Instigator, just really to get in a better position, comes into this very scary Broodmother that did three wounds to me. And then we triple charge a Mutant Rat Fiend, which was uh, lots of fun. So front from Foot Guard, and then a flank and a rear from Fanatics. Uh, so that is going to be 45 plus 60. 105 attacks <laughs> on threes and threes. Do you think I'll do enough wounds to take him off? Oh, and then the hero on Pegasus comes across to hit the, hit the Swarm Cry, hit the um, Warlocks some more, because uh, we apparently hate Warlocks. And that's me showing you the bolt throws. Probably didn't do anything as usual. Uh, we do kill the ton of runners. Yay me. Um, we don't, by the look of it, do we kill the Nightmares? Not sure. Some more wounds on the Warlock, still don't kill him. Whoops. Um, six wounds, nice, Instigator, onto the um, Broodmother, still don't kill that either. Uh, <laughs> and of course it happened. That's 48 wounds, count them. And a double one, onto that Mutant Rat Fiend. <laughs> 48 wounds, guys. Oh, uh, why? Turn five for the rats. So 
Uh, the mutant rat feed behind the wall gets a lovely rear charge on one fanatic unit. Uh, and the counter charge on the other fanatic unit. Um, but uh, only two wounds, which is very, very poor. Um, he also regens half the wounds on fives, which is appalling. So down to 24 wounds. So uh, still only half attacks. Uh, so two wounds onto those fanatics. They're feeling good. The other fanatics do, of course. Oh, do they not die? Well, they take 12 wounds. Surely they're dead. I think they die. Yes, they do. Um, and that's the uh, brood mum. Doesn't do bad, but that brood mum's pretty fierce now. Uh, four wounds onto my uh, instigator. So the other one obviously dies on 12 wounds. They're only a dash 15, and there's no double ones here. Into turn six for me. So this is how the battlefield looks. So I think the range of this like 12 inch circle is like this, right? So currently he's got four, potentially five when that one comes in. Um, but this guy, so these guys will probably die. So forget them. I've got three, four. Yeah, not, not looking great, is it? So this will die. So he'll have two, three. And I'll have four, potentially. Okay, so looking better. It's okay, guys. And I've got my general moon beast over there as well. So uh, turn six, uh, the Fnatic against So the Fnatic against So we go, I think we choose to flank here rather than fly the general in just to stop these guys doing anything bad. I think if I, th I plan if I kill here and back up, I might get the, my monarch in as well. Really sort it out. And then we're going to kill, kill, take the charge, attack here. All right, uh, another number one. So second number one, it's great. Good job. Uh, we kill the warlock with my hero and sidesteps. The hero is definitely in. We kill the mutant rat feed in the center, and we kill the nightmare. So it's not looking great for the rats now. Uh, mutant rat feed does come into these guys on his turn six. Puts them up to ten wounds, but does not kill them. Uh, so at this point, it's looking very, 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 very desperate for the ratkin. And there's a turn seven. Uh, and we pretty much annihilate him. So the Broodmother dies here. The Mutant Rat Fiend dies here. The Swarm Cryer. I do have a go with my hero on Pegasus, but I don't manage to get So he has a Swarm Cryer left alive. Uh, but yeah, a very convincing victory for me. Um, lovely man. Very gracious in defeat. Um, I think a relatively new player. Uh, list needs a bit of tuning, but a uh, really, really nice uh, game to finish the tournament on. So yeah, that's the end of the tournament. And um, did I take? Any, I don't think I took any photographs of armies, for which I apologise. But uh, a fantastic first tournament for these guys ever in Burton. I think they just did a superb job. Initially, I was going to use all my terrain for their tables, but about a month before, um, Scott Messer being ready, so I, we've made enough terrain, and I was like, wow. Um, so pretty, pretty impressive turnaround. Uh, really nice venue. I really enjoyed it. I hope they run some more. There. I'm looking forward to coming back. Um, I think I ended up sixth, so with one, uh, two wins, a draw, and a loss. Um, so pretty pleased with sixth for that. Um, yeah, great time. So thanks very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it, and we'll uh, see you next time. So the next battle report we have is going to be B B B B. Let's think. Well, it's probably going to be a battle report from a Vanguard, a tournament in that old U.S. of A. I'm popping over to Mike Atkins' tournament to play Vanguard. So I hope you look forward to that. I am still working on some terrain videos. April's a bit of a busy month for me. I've got too much going on, so I won't have the chance to do them in April. I'm going to start cracking on those in May. Um, I've already got plans for um, a very highly ranked UK player to come over and um, give me a game for. We're going to film it for a battle report um, in May as well. So lots of video content to come in May. Uh, please bear with me through this busy time. And we'll see you next time on Death by Dragons. Cheers, guys. Bye-bye.